everybody and welcome back to another episode of Path of Pedalberg with Norman. This is another doubles battle and I think it's the last battle I'm going to have with this particular team. You see that I have my Rotom Wash, my Tracheon, Salamence, and Sylveon on my side against their Kangaskhan, Landorus Therian form, Thunderous Incarnate form, and Edge Slash. Pretty, intim pretty intimidating team with a lot of heavy attackers and Edge Slash able to use both defense and attack for its main modes of uh, support and offense. So it was a bit of a, well it was a really interesting battle actually and the way it ended was really, really fun. So I will let you watch as I commentate turn by turn. So first up I send out my Rotom and Tracheon and they send out their Thunders and their Age of Slash. It's looking like it's an okay position for me. I'm able to get some offensive pressure out. Now the Thunderous does use Taunt on my Rotom, smartly targeting the uh, likely special attacking, uh, sorry, the status using Rotom of my Rot. My Tracheon gets a Rock Slide off, which does a lot of damage to that Thunderous, parking the Citrus Berry, bringing it up to about 60% health. And that Taunt means I can't use will -O's this turn, or in the next three turns. Their blade form, Edge Slash does a Shadow Ball into my Tracheon, bringing it just under half health. Now they wind guard, seeing that I rock slide the last turn, which is a very smart move because that is what I go for this turn. But I do notice that my Tracheon is faster than their Thunderous. And because I survived this turn with that clutch one hit point survival, I can do something next turn, potentially. Hydro Pump comes out into Edge Slash and does a decent amount of damage, but this turn I want to bring out my Sylveon because I want to tank a bit of damage and save Tracheon for a later part of the match, hopefully if I need it. Widegar comes out again, but not going to do anything this turn, and the Thunder Wave does go into Sylveon. The Hydro Pump does connect here, but I didn't target down the Edge Slash because I thought it might possibly King Shield, and I wanted to get damage off under the Slenders if at all possible. And Thunderbolt does go into Rotom doing a little bit of damage, but not much. And Hydro Pump does connect here again, thankfully, and knocks out the Age of Slash. So it's 4-3 three, three in my favor. And Sylveon uses Psy Shock instead of Hyper Voice because I thought a Wide Guard might come out again. So I wanted to get damage off just in any, in any case. So I'm down no Pokemon, they're down two Pokemon, and I'm in a pretty good position so far. Their Kangaskhan and their Landorus are both forced to stay in here, and the Intimidate goes into not any of my physical attackers, which is great. Now, I switched out Sylveon into Trakhan here because of two reasons. One, oh, sorry, one reason. One, Trakhan isn't really going to do much for me in this game, aside from maybe close combat uh, Kangaskhan, but any sucker punch, a Sucker Punch would knock it out immediately, so it's not really going to do much for me in the long term, so I put it out here as basically Meat Shield. Uh, Fake Out goes into Rotom this turn, not doing a ton of damage, parking my Citrus Berry and bringing me essentially back to where I was when it started the attack. Rock Slide comes out and is going to connect with both of my Pokemon, Trachyon is going to faint, and my Rotom is down just into the yellow range of its hit points, and it flinches because of Fake Out. Now, that gives me a free switch into Salamence with an Intimidate onto both physical attackers, which is fantastic for me. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch it out for Sylveon, because I want to get another Intimidate off on it later, because if I can reduce these physical attackers' attack, hit point, attack stats even further, it will be much better for me later on. So Double Edge does come into Sylveon's spot, where Kangaskhan was targeting down Salamence. It does a lot of damage but not enough thanks to the defensive training of my Sylveon and the Intimidate. But Rock Slide does come out from Landorus, not knocking me out. Now I did notice that Landorus was slower than Kangaskhan, so that makes me think that it is, say, banded, or maybe a soul vested. Uh, Rotom faints to that double edge, and the Rico there is doing minimal damage to that Kangaskhan because there wasn't that much HP to begin with, and Rock Slide connects here to knock out my Sylveon. So now I'm down 1-2, to two, but I'm in a decent position because I have now intimidated these Pokemon twice, 
meaning that their attack stats are reduced by two. So this first turn, I'm going to Mega Up, and just to ensure that I am faster than both of these Pokemon, I'm going to protect this first turn to remove any damage possibilities or um, speed ties. So I noticed that so far it hasn't been using Sucker Punch, so I'm kind of curious as to whether it's even carrying that. So I double edge this Landorus, and it does a lot of damage onto it, thanks to my offensive training with this Salamence and this overwhelming physical attack. So a double edge comes out from Kangaskhan, but at minus two attack it's not going to do a ton of damage. Now I'm only at 36 hit points, and I use a protect, protect here because I want to see if it does have Sucker Punch, and if it's going to try and... KO me before I can attack, and it does have Sucker Punch. Now, I figured this is going to be a mind game, so I decided to Dragon Dance, which is smart on my part, and I was running calculations at this time just to see if um, it could potentially KO me with Sucker Punch, so I was trying to stall some turns out, and it does turn out that it can KO me with a Sucker Punch, but it has about a 2% chance to do so. So. These Dragon Dances here are just to make sure that I can one day KO it and potentially stall out the Sucker Punch if I can maybe not have to worry about recoil fainting. So it does show that it uh, uses Sucker Punch here when I do attack, but because I was fairly confident in my calculations, I didn't worry about it. And you see there I survived with 3 hit points, and Double Edge does knock it out with that plus 2 attack from Dragon Dance. But the recoil here makes it a double KO, so it's going to be a 0-0 win for me. The rules of the game ensure that the first Pokemon to faint in a double KO is the loser, and the last Pokemon to faint in a double KO is the winner. So because Double Edge ensures that recoil happens after an opponent faints, or after opponent damage is done, then the first Pokemon to faint will be the target of Double Edge. And so because of that, I take a 0-0 zero zero win, and I hope you all enjoy this battle. See you next time.